and welcome ICS3U folks. Uh, today's lesson is on PERT charts. Now, PERT charts, if you remember correctly, were one of the possible deliverables during the one of the early phases of the SDLC. And we're going to actually, we're going to spend some time working with PERT charts, program evaluation, and uh, what does it stand for again? What does it stand for? Let's just look. Program Evaluation and Review Technique Chart. Program Evaluation and Review Technique Chart. Um, and uh, what it says here. Oh, yeah, right there. I could have guessed, I guess I could have just read my note. Uh, chart show in a graphical way the amounts of time required to complete a large task and when we would expect subtasks to start and end. And we'll talk all about that. The idea is, you know, a big project is broken into a bunch of smaller tasks. Some of them can be um, started and accomplished concurrently, mean, meaning at the same time. Um, so that means I don't have to do them all in order, right? I don't have to do all them all one after each other because some of them can be, at, in this example, two and three can be done at the same time. The critical path is the minimum amount of time required to complete all tasks. Any task along the critical path, if delayed, would delay the entire project. And we'll see that once we get to an example. Um, a Gantt chart, on the other hand, uh, shows a calendar of task completions. And this is an example of a, of a, of a Gantt chart where we can see some, some dates and how long these activities will take over those dates. And we'll practice doing some Gantt charts later. Um, today is all about uh, the PERT chart. So, um, you've got you've downloaded this from Edmodo, hopefully, and you're you're following along. What what we're gonna do is do an example of a PERT chart. So um, probably the easiest thing to do is use Smart um, the Smart Notebook software. You don't have to <clears throat> anything where you can draw line segments and then do some text on them should work. Um, I've got Smart Notebook fired up here. And I'm going to use the screen capture tool just so I can copy the, the question. And I'm going to do a title there so I know what my new file is. Um, there's that. And I'm going to put a title in here. ICS3U. Kind of large font there. Make that go smaller. Something like that. And I think this is 4 underscore 5, I think. Let's call it four underscore five, even though it's not, maybe not. That's what we'll call it. Per charts. And so we're going to do this one example together, and then you're going to be asked to do a couple on your own. Ferd is on a tight schedule in the morning. He has uh, listed several tasks, time for completion and prereq prereq prerequisite tasks. It says, create a PERT chart to match Ferd's task table. Okay, so that's the idea, is we want to create something that looks like not like this one. This is a Gantt chart. This one, the PERT chart. Um, that's goes with his his morning. It says, "What is the critical path?" And we'll go back and remind ourselves of what that is. And a third must catch the bus at 8:17. For what time should he set his alarm? So this is all the things that he does in the morning. And he we know he has to walk to the bus stop uh, for 8:17. And so when's the latest that he could he could get up? Okay, well let's let's do this. We're gonna um, start. I'm gonna have a bunch of little circles here so it matches what we've got. Uh, start. I'm gonna make this font really small so it'll fit in. Uh, start. Put that there. Um, he wakes up, and that doesn't take any time. There's no prerequisite tasks, but the, then the first the first uh, step in his day is he needs to shower. So I'm going to put a little step that has shower. And well, I'm not going to write shower in there. Actually, what I'm going to do is just put an A in there. Okay. Uh, let's see if I can center that and make it look nicer. Center that. Yeah, that looks better. Uh, and that's. I don't think I even need it that small. Let's make it bigger. 
I make it? Yeah, a little bit. Oh, that's better. Okay. And so he showers. The next one is, oh, and by the way, the start, whatever it happens to be, has to be done before he can start showering. So I'm going to show a little arrow that start then goes to to the shower uh, process. The next one is uh, dressing. So here, I'm going to put B over here somewhere. The length of these lines don't really matter at all. Uh, just kind of uh, how they flow from one to another. And I'm going to go like that. I'm actually going to change this, click off of here and change this so it is always 24. Uh, and I'm going to change the size of that so it looks nicer. Same thing. Yeah. And so before that can start, uh, A has to be done. So that's what it says here. Before he can start getting dressed, the prerequisite task is showering. So A has to be finished. This task needs to be finished. Now, how long is spent along this task? Well, what task is happening along here is showering. That takes eight minutes. So I'm going to write in there, right here, eight minutes, and put that in the right spot. This task starts in eight minutes. Um, and then what's the next thing? And I'm just going in order. Sometimes you, you kind of got to jump around, but but um, I'm just going to go in order until I need to do something else. So next thing is to make coffee. Notice that it happens after B is done, but I'm going to put C over here. This is the next task, which is making coffee. Bird's a coffee drinker, apparently. Okay, and then what task is happening before he can make coffee while he has to get dressed first? And how long does this take? Dressing takes six minutes, so I'm going to put on that line segment six minutes. Okay, that takes six minutes. The next one, D, making cereal, has to happen uh, after he's dressed as well. So notice um, here, and I, I'm going to kind of put it right underneath. I'm not going to put it over here because it's kind of hooked up to B. And so I'm going to put this as D in here, and that happens after he gets dressed again. What task is happening along this arrow? Well, this is dressing. This is still, again, six minutes. I'm just going to press Control and copy that down there. Um, notice I'm not worried about these uh, tasks yet and how long they take because they don't have to be finished yet. I'm just following the, the, uh, the tasks. Notice... This is our first example of two things that can happen at the same time. So Ferd can start the coffee and he can start his cereal, and those two things are happening at the same time. Twelve minutes to make coffee. Uh, listen to the weather report. Listen to the weather report. The prerequisite task is B again. So when he's doing making his coffee and making his cereal, he can be also listening to the weather report, which is something that's apparently important to Ferd. And I'm going to put these all kind of in a line this way, just because... It kind of shows me that these things can kind of happen at the same time. You won't see this all the time. It doesn't matter. Uh, I'm getting this This line is longer than the other ones, but the length of these lines do not matter. What process is happening along this line is still uh, the dressing, right? And that's got to be done before he can do C or D or E, uh, which is all of these things. Um, he has to be dressed before he can do any of these tasks. And I'm just doing them in order here. F, eating breakfast. So eating breakfast uh, can only happen after C and D are done. C and D are done. Uh, so over here somewhere, these two have to be done. This is the eating breakfast task, which is, which is task F. And now that can't start until these two are done, right? Okay, well, what's happening along this task is making coffee. How long did that take? Well, making coffee took 12 minutes.
F can't occur until D happens as well. D happens, that only took two minutes. And so this is two minutes here. Andy, hopefully you're getting the idea of this. Um, F, G, read the newspaper. Well, reading the newspaper can happen as soon as he's dressed as well. So that happens after B. Now, I'm kind of running out of room. Um, I'll make myself some more room. Uh, what's funny is the order of these don't really matter. I, this, so I could put, just because it, it, it suits me, I could put G up here, but I'm going to put put G down here just just so you see that it doesn't really matter how long these line segments are there's G and I'm gonna have a line segment from B B is the important thing I guess getting dressed is important for bird as as it should be as it should be it should be important um, and again before that happens before he can read the newspaper he has to get dressed getting dressed takes six minutes brushing his teeth so after he he brushes his teeth after F and G are done. So notice, it wouldn't make sense for me to put task H down here because that would be at the same time as F. And we generally want to read from left to right. So I'm going to put H over here somewhere. You know, could I put it here or here or here? Yeah, any of those are fine. But generally, I want to think of going from left to right. All right, before H can start, F has to happen. And so does uh, so does G. Now, notice I can see E is going to get in the way here. You see that? E is going to get in the way. Uh, so I'm actually, I am going to move G. And you can, you can do this too, I hope. I'm going to move G up here. Just move that arrow up there. Move it, move it like that. Just so it kind of suits better. It kind of looks nicer this way. Um, all right, well, let's put some numbers on it. This G, reading the newspaper, takes 15 minutes. So I'm going to put a 15-minute thing on there, 15 minutes. F, I, I need a, a number on there. F was eating breakfast, which took four minutes. Okay, so that's H done. Notice that I haven't completed task E or task H yet. Um, but what's the next thing? I is wa walking to the to the bus stop. And it ha both of those things have to be done. E and H both have to be done before Ferd walks to the uh, bus stop. So this is I. Center that, that looks nice. H and E have to both be done. Um, and some time on this thing. What uh, is going on in, on this this uh, task is H, which is five minutes long. And E, listening to the weather report. Well, that takes five minutes as well. I'm going to uh, put that on there. Um, and then before I'm done, it actually has to walk to the bus stop. Bam. And then he can actually stop. And I'm going to copy. Oops. Undo that. Copy that. Control copy that here. And so I can just change that word to stop. And of course, that walk to the bus stop took two minutes. And this is actually the answer for A. This is this is the PERT chart for Ferd's morning. So this is this is part A. Create a PERT chart for Ferd's morning. Um, done. Except for the interesting stuff is not done. Which is what is the critical path? So you know if the coffee takes longer, it takes longer for him to brush his teeth, or he gets interested in the newspaper. What what part would make him late? Because some of this stuff all can happen at the same time. There's a six to no one here. I'm going to move this six up to go there. Um, well, the thing is, is what we'll do is we'll build the early, what's called the earliest start time for each of these, these tasks. And the earliest start time for the stop will be how long it takes them in general. And we'll be able to get the critical path from there. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color of my of my text. I'm going to change that to red. No, 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 not you. Darn it. You're still 12 font, and then uh, not on it. There, red. I'm going to make this red just so we can do the earliest start time. So the earliest start time for um, part A, which is his showering, is zero minutes zero minutes after he wakes up he can start showering right away but now if i if i just look at the pert chart b what's the earliest start time for b well it takes him eight minutes to shower so that means b can start after eight minutes uh what about all of these g c d and e all have to be done started after A is done and after B is done. So each of these, you know, A is done and B, this, he can actually start reading the newspaper 14 minutes in. 8 plus 6, 14. So I'm going to put 14 above there. And notice that's the same for each of these because he could also start making coffee. He could also doing uh, step D, which is uh, making cereal all after he's done dressing. So the, the earliest start time for any of these tasks is 14 minutes into his morning. Okay. Now, notice that if I read from top to bottom, you might be tempted to do this next one here, but this F is in the way. Okay. So now, what's the earliest start time for F? This is the key to these PERT charts is what number you're going to write next. You say, well, the earliest start time 14 plus 2 is 16 minutes. Is it 16 minutes? Well, no, because he can't start doing F, which is eating breakfast. He can't start eating breakfast until his coffee's made. So, and in fact, C has to be done before he can start F. And so then, the earliest start time, you think you take the smaller one, but the, the, the rule is you always take the bigger one, okay? Because that has to be done. This task has to be done before I can um, start the next task. And so now it kind of makes makes sense. So, so this D making cereal is kind of less important in Ferd's morning than making coffee. If he gets delayed in making coffee, then it means it's going to be later that he can start eating breakfast. So. That's kind of the idea of critical path, and we'll trace the critical path soon. Uh, what's next? Notice that um, before he can brush his teeth, this path needs to be done, and this path needs to be done. Well, notice that this path, which is uh, reading the newspaper, which takes 15 minutes, could be done in 14 plus 15. This could be 29, right? That would be the earliest start time there, 29. However, this path was 26 plus another four minutes for eating breakfast. That makes 30. So we have 29 through here, 30 through here. So which one do I pick? I pick the largest one because this task has to be done first before I can start brushing my teeth. He has to actually be done eating breakfast before he can start brushing his teeth. And again, this task then isn't along the critical path because there's a little bit of what's called slack time in there. There's a minute off. This takes 29 minutes. So, so Ferd could actually start reading the newspaper a minute later and not delay his, his arrival time. All right, same thing here. If I keep going, this one would be 35. This one would be 14 plus five, which is 19. So which one do I pick? I pick the biggest one um, because the task needs to be finished. Right, and then here, two minutes to walk to the bus, that's 37. So the, his whole morning takes 37 minutes, even though there's lots of different tasks for him to do. Now, what's the critical path? The critical path, you could kind of think of as where did the 37 came from? Well, it came from here. Where did the 35 come from? It came from here. Where did the 30 come from? It came from here. Where did the 26 come from? Well, it came from 14 plus 12. And in this way, I'm tracing what's called the critical path. 
anything along the critical path makes it so if any of these tasks are delayed for its entire uh, morning gets delayed by by a by a minute or two or however long it's delayed that's the critical path so I'm gonna write I'm gonna write that in there this is B the critical path is and I'm just gonna read off it's start and then a and then B and then C and then F H I and then stop and does it actually say how long it's t it'll take 37 minutes birds morning is 37 minutes long and then part C is to answer the question that was asked which is okay if he's got to catch the bus at at um, 817 just a little after quarter after what time does he have to actually have to set his alarm for well 37 minutes it takes for him to get to the bus stop going through his entire morning so if I go 37 minutes back from from um, 817 subtract 37 minutes well that's that's quarter to that's quarter to eight isn't it right no it's not it's it's not quarter to eight it's 840 or 740 rather 740 20 minutes to get to eight and then another 17 minutes after that to get to 817 so he has to he must wake up at 740 and then hope he's not none of these processes are getting late. now I realize this is a goofy example but you can picture how if these are bits and pieces of a program that needs to be written and yet you make an estimate about how long it takes that how these huge projects are either on budget and on time or not and this is the critical path okay so you've got um, a couple to try for homework and ask questions ask ask me to explain one of the steps if you need the the accept uh, steps explained uh, one thing that I kind of uh, I forgot to mention let me put it in green here these uh, green green these things here these red numbers are the earliest start time earliest start time of each of these tasks EST earliest start time of each task and of course the earliest start time of the finish is the earliest completion time which we called uh, the critical path good okay good remember to save up your your file um, the homework uh, is in a separate smart notebook uh, file and get at it